Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for tuning in to our monthly market update video for March. Happy spring to you and your family. Inventory continues to be the big talking point. Uh, as of March 1st, 2021, we had a total of 123 listings here in North Central. What does that really mean? Well, let's compare it to March 1st of 2020. We had 251 total listings. That's a 50% decrease year over year. Now, even though with the limited inventory, there are still just as many transactions. So people are buying and selling homes, albeit the price points a lot higher. In February of 2020, we had 204 transactions with an average price per square foot of $209.77. Fast forward to February of 2021, we had 217 sales, so a little few, a few more, uh, but the average price point went up to $246.90. Some notable North Central sales from the last six months that were north of $2 million uh, that I thought were, were worth bringing up. 5600 North 4th Street sold for $2,001,000. The Cornelia Group actually sold 307 West Lamar Road for $2,033,200. 135 East Missouri Avenue sold for $2,410,000. 5808 North 2nd Avenue sold for $2,900,000. That was actually $600 per square foot. 6035 North Central Avenue sold for $3,500,000. In addition to these, there's been several sales at or above $400 a square foot, which when you think about, gosh, just the recent past, just us thinking about $300 a square foot seemed high. Yeah, we kind of flew right past $300 a square foot. Feels like it. So absolutely huge numbers here in North Central. So the question that Steve and I get all the time, how do we price our house correctly to really maximize the value? Here's a strategy that Steve and I like to use. We like to really look at the comps, go over them with you, and then we suggest to list at or just a little bit above what the actual comps are. Meaning that if we price your house just a little bit above the comps, we're gonna actually get more buyers with eyes on your homes. The more buyers that are looking at your home, the higher the price. Ultimately, the market's gonna dictate what your house is selling for. We're seeing homes sell for well over asking price right now. It doesn't mean we underpriced your home, it means we actually hit the mark got a huge buyer pool to look at it, and then they kind of competed for it, if you will. Um, that's the best thing about real estate. You can't undersell your house in any market. What The market will tell you what your house is worth. Absolutely. Another thing to keep in mind are the automated value tools that are on the internet, like the Zestimates on Zillow. Those things can be significantly inaccurate. Computers just simply don't have the ability to walk into a house, see how well done a home is, how not well done a home is, see the floor plan, and then the little location differences that can make a big uh, difference in values. There's so many different variables that we consider. Architectural styles, uh, new builds, all older homes, and then older homes that have been remodeled, and to what extent have they been remodeled. Uh, school districts, what side of the street it's on, that sometimes makes a difference. Um, so all of those things go into making up the value of your home, and, and it can be really tricky. Um, so here are a couple of things that we uh, consider when evaluating your home. One thing that we consider when pricing is a, a big portion can be new construction versus remodeled or not remodeled. Uh, new construction definitely obtains a premium. And many of the highest per square foot sales, no matter what size home in the area, are brand new construction. One other thing we keep in mind is uh, single level versus multi-level homes. Single level homes just simply uh, do in general get a higher per square foot number. Also lot size, I know we touched on it earlier, but if you're comparing two homes, exact same size, one's on a 7,500 square foot lot and the other's on a 15,000 square foot lot, I think it goes without saying that the larger the lot, typically the higher the price. And then lastly, ceiling height. I know it's a funny one to talk about, but here in North Central, most of these older ranch style houses has, have an eight foot ceiling plate. I know I do at my house, it's 1955 ranch. But what we're seeing is when you do a remodel, if you bounce up the addition in, in the master bedroom or you expand a great room and you lift that ceiling height to nine foot plus or do a vault, you typically get a little bit higher return on your money than if you were just to keep that eight foot plate throughout. Absolutely. In conclusion, uh, we really hope that you found this information useful. And as always, please do not hesitate to reach out to us if you wanna discuss any of the stuff we just went over, the market in general, or anything else real estate related. And thank you again for tuning in with us today. Uh, we really appreciate your continued support, the referrals that you send to us. Hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you.